It was perfect. But no, you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your ego. You just had to be the man. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. As you might already know, Unity decided a rather unconventional marketing campaign for Godot and Unreal Engine. While they officially revert the original statement and introduced changes that might even be interesting for indie developers, we still decided to switch from Unity to Godot. Although we wouldn't have been immediately affected, you never know, maybe our games will reach a million downloads in a few years. Wait a minute! You. We are Fiddlestone Games, a small indie development team of two people. We have already published a small mobile game called Oakley's Adventure. You can check it out in the App Store and in Google Play Store. It is an endless scrolling game where the main goal is to climb as high as possible using swiping gestures to create spider webs. Keep in mind, this is our very first game, so it is far from perfect. Still, we will be very happy if you give it a try and let us know what you think about it. However, we are currently working on another project. This game will not be a mobile game anymore since we do not like to focus on in-game ads and rather want to keep the game as fun as possible. And the main target platform will be Steam. But we started to create it in Unity. So? we will need to recreate what we already have in Godot. We thought maybe there are other developers out there that share the same problem and could use some inspiration of how to do things in Godot, especially with a C-sharp background. So without any further ado, let's get started. We already have a Unity project, so we just need to redo the player movement, and the attack system, and the shaders, and the collision and the system, UI elements, and the inventory, and the recipes, and the dungeon generation, and the room creation, and the enemy process, and the player and savings, and the modifiers, and the animations, and the actual gaming. <laughs> Maybe we should start setting up the environment first. You can get Godot on the official website, and there you will find two different versions. One with .NET support and one without. We highly recommend using the .NET version simply because it contains the standard version plus the .NET compatibility. At this point we need to mention that we are preferably working in a C-sharp environment. Both of us are full-time software developers for larger companies, where we are used to work with scalable projects. Therefore, we will definitely choose c -sharp for most of our scripts. If you want to learn how to get started with c -sharp, we might even make a video about it. Just let us know in the comments below. If you just want to create a small jump and run game or even bigger projects, GDScript works perfectly fine for that. Also, we don't want to push you away from learning GDScript here. Especially because Godot allows you to combine both languages within the same project. Anyway. We decided to use Visual Studio Code for a smoother workflow when working with our Godot projects. I tried to couple it with Visual Studio 2022, but the overall experience just wasn't as clean as responsive as with VS Code, since we will find ourselves opening scripts a lot from within the Godot editor. There are some extensions for Godot files available that will need to be installed. Also, remember to set up your .NET build task and to link it to Godot itself. If you, for whatever reason, don't like VS Code, you can use any other third-party IDE as well. Once we have set up everything, we should be able to open up Godot and just let it run and it should work without failing. If you see a bunch of red error messages, that might be a slight hint that you did something wrong. There's another thing we need to prepare for our workflow. We did have a nugget package with our most used features in our Unity projects and that obviously does not work for Godot anymore. For those who don't know what the Nugget package is, it is basically a paper box containing 6 to 12 deep fried chicken elements. It is basically a code library that is available on a public or a private package registry that you can use in any of your projects without manually moving files around. In this package, we included classes and interfaces that substitute design patterns that we use a lot, like singletons, object pooling, observer pattern and so on. It seems like we only need to set up our own CICD pipeline for it and voila, we can start working. But that will be part of the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to help us create more, please like and subscribe. Bye.